Hello everyone, thank you for checking out this video. You are with Coach Jordan from Territory Academy. Right now, we are going to be solving this question together. For this lesson, we will be making use of Vieta's theorem. Alright, so what exactly is Vieta's theorem? So let us first talk about what that entails. Now, Vieta's theorem suggests that if we have a quadratic equation of a general form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero, then if I were to let my roots be a and sorry alpha and beta respectively, then the sum of my roots, which is alpha plus beta, is denoted by negative b over a. Alright, not just that, but the product of my roots, which is alpha beta, is actually equal to c over a. In this manner. Alright, so using Vieta's theorem and applying it to this question, right, this quadratic equation given to us is already of the general form, so no other manipulation or transformation is needed. So, applying Vieta's theorem over here, for this particular equation, my sum of my roots, which is alpha plus beta, will be negative p over 1, which is just going to be negative p. Whereas my product of my roots will be c over a, which is q over 1, which will give me just simply q. Alright? So over here, let's figure out what we know. The question further tells us that p plus q is equal to 1, 9, 8 as well. Now we do have q in the form of alpha and beta, but right now we only have a value for negative p. Alright? So if we multiply by negative 1 on both sides, p will give us the negative of alpha plus beta. Alright? So if this is equation 1 and the product gives us equation 2, all right, we can sub 1 and 2 into the sub of p plus q. All right? So p now becomes negative alpha plus beta, q now becomes alpha beta. So essentially what you get is alpha beta minus alpha minus beta equals to 198. All right? So this actually almost looks like an expression that can be factorized. Right, because you have alpha beta minus alpha minus beta, right? But we're just missing a constant. So seeing as all our coefficients here are pretty much just one, a good idea would be to say to introduce positive one on the left hand side, and then I will add one to one and eight as well. Okay, so this is actually now a expression that can be factorized into alpha minus one multiplied by beta minus one because alpha times beta gives me my first term. Alpha times negative one gives us negative alpha. Minus one times beta gives us minus beta. And of course, two negative ones must give us a positive one. And this is equals to 199, all right? Now, if you try to prime factorize this number 199, you realize that you won't be able to find any prime factors and that is because 199 itself is, in fact, a prime number. Which means, therefore, that 199 can only be expressed as a product of 1 and 199 themselves. Right? And since we are looking for integer solutions to this equation, then it is necessary that alpha and beta must both be integers as well. Hence, it is possible that this can be written as 1 times 199 or negative 1 multiplied by negative 199. So let us explore the positive solutions first, all right? So a minus 1 could potentially be 199, and then beta minus 1 could be just 1. Alpha in this case would therefore be 200, and beta would just be 2. So you can see that the pair of solutions 200 and 2 gives rise to one pair of integer solutions. Right, so this is in fact one possible answer. Okay, but now we also have to consider the negative counterpart, which means that alpha minus 1 could be negative 199, and beta minus 1 could be negative 1. 
All right, adding one to both sides, alpha will therefore now be negative 198, while beta will actually just be zero. All right, so you can see since both of these are integers as well, we would have a total of four such integer solutions. Okay, so therefore your solutions are x could be equals to, starting from the smallest, we have negative 198, we have zero, we have positive two, followed by positive 200. And therefore, I have four total integer solutions for x. All right. So just to recap, we only know that p plus q equals to 198, all right, but we don't know the exact values for p and q themselves, which is why using Vieta's theorem to give us an expression for sum of roots as well as product of roots can be so useful here. All right. And then once we achieve this form, recognize that it can be factorized into these two, a, uh, sorry, alpha minus 1 multiplied by beta minus 1. And since 199 is prime, then there are only two possibilities as listed over here. All right. We have completed this lesson. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. Goodbye, and see you again in another lesson. If you would like to learn more from these tutorials, please smash that like and subscribe button.